Hi, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna go over the top 10 ways to help you win the bid. Stay tuned. So if you watch any of my videos, it is no secret that we are in a heavy seller's market. So this video is for you buyers. For any of you buyers interested in wanting to purchase a home in 2021 in this crazy insane market. So here's some tips or even not only that, you're new to the game. So before I get into my tips, please leave a like on this video. It really helps me out. It helps with the YouTube algorithm and I really appreciate it. Thumbs up if you're stoked. So as a buyer, there's not a lot of options for homes because homes are coming on the market. Depending on whether or not you're seeing that, a home could be gone like that in a few days because you have multiple offers. You got a lot of people looking at the at the new homes. Brand spanking new, like, and then you see the sticker price and it's like, oh, okay, I can do that. That's within my limits. That's within my pre-approval. So I'm interested in that home and you go see the home. You wanna, you wanna place a bid, you like the home. So you put your offer in and you may think that I'm coming in with a really good, strong offer. So you submit your offer, your agent submits the offer for you. You get the phone call back and you didn't get the house. And you're like, why didn't I get the house? I feel like I put a really great offer. Well, you find that home had received over 20 offers, you know, and they were all above asking price. Here's some tips that may help you. And if you're okay with this, with some of these options, you can use some of these to help structure your deal a little bit better. So tip number one is to have an agent that talks to the listing agent. Depending on how long you've been in the market or at least if you know people, if you've been in the, in the business for a while, you know certain people. Just like with any industry, you know you know who the it people are, you recognize people's names. If this is your, have, an, have your agent talk to that listing agent and find out the offer situation. So in some cases, um, a listing agent can say like, look, can put it in the, um, can put it in the multiple list, listing service, which is also known as the MLS. And if you're getting that through Zillow or, you know, Redfin or Trulia, if you're receiving, if you're a buyer, you're receiving that information on any third party sites or any broker sites at all regarding a particular list, particular listing, they may put that in the common section. But, you know, they may put it in the public section or they may put it in the agent remarks where it's like only visible to agents, licensed agents that are able to see it. They can say like, look, all offers, um, like some language could be like, we are accepting offer, like showing start on say Monday. We have all your offers. Offers are due by Sunday at 7 p.m you know, or some, some sort of language like that. You could put offers in, you know, you go in and gives you to your thinking like, oh, that gives me time to go look at the house and I can, you know, decipher whether or not I want to buy the house. But before you know it, sometimes that can't be gospel. So even though sometimes they have that language there, don't take that as gospel because there's always somebody that is able to, you know, put an offer in that would make a seller be like, okay, well, forget all this. I'll take that offer. I can't refuse it. It's an offer too good to review. So I mean to say that all the same. It's like have your agent call the agent beforehand and see if it's still available because things change like really quickly. So that's the first tip. Number two is offer a post settlement contingency. And this kind of closes in sides with number one because it's like if you're finding out that the seller needs to move, like doesn't have a place to go, they just need time. Maybe offer post settlement contingency such as a rent back uh, or lease back or extend settlement. Um, but it's more so speaking as the post settlement con occupancy that it's like you're giving, you're structuring your deal so that you can close when the seller finds another place to go, depending on, or you're renting back the house for so much money and, you know, allowing the seller like so much time to find another house. So that may also may make your offer favorable because there's a lot of sellers that need to sell in order to buy. So keep that in mind. Number three, um, transfer tax. Now this is specifically for Philadelphia, but you can also use this for any city that you're in. You can offer as a buyer to cover the seller's transfer tax. You can do that. 
So, cause normally as a buyer, if you're able to take that and be willing to offer that to cover the seller side as well and all, and pay offer to pay full transfer tax, that may make your offer stand out a whole lot more than just, okay, full ass number, this is how much I'm offering, I'm waiving all my contingencies, because that's just the basic. Number four is the down payment. Your down payment is one of the is one of the things that you use to help you get the house. In Philly, um, or at least in my neck of the woods, <laughs> most people do put in like two deposits. So you can do one deposit within the first five days and then do a second deposit, whether or not it's like 20 days or after contingency, regardless, you can do two deposits. So that's how we've traditionally been doing real estate for the past, past like five years now. Yes, it's always, it's been like two deposits been asked for. So, but because things are moving so quickly and people want to make sure that their offers stand out, I suggest is to put down more money as your deposit. So instead of putting down a thousand to $500 as your first deposit, as just do one lump sum, because if, if you really want to buy this house, all that money's just gonna go towards your down payment anyway. So it's less cash you gotta bring to the table because you already have so much money in the pot if you get through that. And remember that yes, it's your deposit. Figure out are you okay with having much so much more money in the pot just to get the house. But it does make the seller really think about, okay, this person has more skin in the game. Number five, now this can be a very controversial topic because you know you want to make sure you're buying a house. Like if you're constantly doing like putting offers in and you're waiving inspections and you feel like that you have to keep going above and beyond for asking and whatnot just to make the seller accept your offer to make it look good. As a buyer, you're probably thinking like, like why would I want to buy a house like that? I feel like if I'm buying a house, I want to make sure I'm getting a good product. I want to make sure that there's nothing wrong that's going to bite me in the behind later, later down the road because I didn't do my due diligence. So for inspections, here's a caveat. If you don't want to waive your inspections, of course, waiving inspections is better. It's going to be the best thing, you know, but if you're not going to do that, because not everybody is feels comfortable waiving inspections is to tighten up your inspection period. Have all your inspections, but the thing is, is to make sure that you tighten it up. So if you have 10 days, like cause in Pennsylvania, and I'm talking about Pennsylvania real estate, and I'm just going alongside cause that's what I know, 10 days is the default. Instead of 10 days, dwindling down to like five to seven days or even less. If you can get in within the first five days, it doesn't take like get an inspector come through, look at the house, you know, and get all your other inspections, get your quotes in, make it easy. That way the seller is not keeping that their house too long off the market. They'll still keep the main put it in an active under contract, but it's a but it leaves it open so that you decide not to buy that house. They can go with another buyer very quickly. Another thing as, as a tip, that when you go in on your first appointment, you know, if you have a buddy that's really good with construction or somebody that's an ins uh, that's a home inspector, like if you know somebody like that, ask them to accompany you on the showing because in Pennsylvania, you know, I think the rule is now three people allowed in the house because of, you know, COVID. That's your agent and two buyers so it's like it could be buyers that two buyers that are spouses or partners you know or friends or whatever but three people so you can have your third person be your inspector can come through and walk through the house and do like not like a full-fledged inspection but be like you know make sure that okay the electrical is good make sure the plumbing is good make sure certain things are not are in order and what so that it's like yes it may not be a full-blown inspection so it's not a bad idea so if you have a friend that's an inspector with that that does have that experience then they can be able to advise you and that way you can shut you can tighten down your inspection period a lot quicker so that is it those are my tips thank you so much for watching thank you for bearing with me i know this was a longer video so i really appreciate it again please hit the like button subscribe notification button and also comment below thank you i will see you on the next one